In Ukraine, some of the country's air defenses have been destroyed overnight by Russian attacks and already dozens of lives lost. You're getting a live look from the capital of Kyiv, where it's nearly 5 p.m. We'll have the latest on the crisis unfolding in Ukraine, and we'll talk in a live interview with a local expert. Plus, San Antonio firefighters still trying to knock down a massive fire at a historic building downtown. The latest on what officials think started the blaze. And eyes on the weather again this morning as we round out a very frigid morning in the San Antonio metro area. Justin Horn has the latest on the ifs and whens of when we work warm back up. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It's Thursday, the 24th. Just a quick reminder, several school districts in our big viewing area have delayed the start of classes this morning due to concerns over the weather and possible road conditions. That list includes the following Harper ISD, Comal, Luling and San Marcos CISD. The list continues. There's Marion ISD, Navarro ISD, Blanco ISD and Seguin ISD have also delayed classes this morning. The big takeaway right now no cancellations at this point. We will keep you up and updated over on KSAT.com. Blanco ISD is the latest addition to that list between newscasts this morning. All right, let's go outside with live cam right now. A few droplets on the lens. It has uh, not been a moisture free morning, that's for sure, but we kind of dodged a bullet here, didn't we, Justin? I think we really did. It, the precipitation overnight was fairly light. There were some spots where it got a little bit damp. Temperatures obviously right on the cusp there of some the, the freezing line here in San Antonio. Right now, roads look okay, and Steven's going to jump up and jump into that here in just a second. But I, I think we really did dodge a bullet. And you look at the radar, you don't see much. Everything we're dealing with is very, very light. Still seeing a little bit of that drizzle, as you just saw there on live cam moving through. And temperatures, well, they're sitting in the 30s. You see all the cloud cover. That's really not going to go away today. 32 degrees at the airport. We are below freezing in places like Kerrville, Rock Springs, Fredericksburg, where we're seeing some 20s. Even to the east of San Antonio, there have been a few slick spots with some of this drizzle coming down. But by and large, not a lot of issues to deal with. The, the cold really is the biggest story. And, and the wind chill feels like 26 here in San Antonio right now, 23 in Kerrville, 22 in Rock Springs, 24 in New Braunfels. There still is a winter weather advisory that's going to go through noon. And they did add some of our eastern counties uh, last night. But I think the threat is really starting to wind it down. We'll see those cloudy skies really just take over this afternoon. A lot of that drizzle moves away. And here's how the forecast shapes up. Temperatures 35 noontime, close to 40 this afternoon. And then we may actually get a little bit of clearing tonight before clouds move right back in. And we get some more drizzle and perhaps some shower activity again tomorrow and especially as we get into Saturday. So we're not done with this cold weather just yet. And we're not done with the damp weather either. We're going to jump into that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes, but we need to get over to Stephen now and talk roadways. How are things looking right now, Stephen? Well, I would say it's been a pretty gross morning out there, Justin, to say the least 35 at Alamo. Now what we're looking at is definitely not a crash, but we're seeing a pretty big slowdown out there, and that's because of that fire that happened earlier this morning. That exit off 35 Cesar Chavez has been closed for several hours as crews are working to knock down that fire, get it under control, but you can see that it's definitely causing that impact on the roadways. Let's go ahead and start with that bird's eye view of the map. Now I did also speak with Texas about the conditions, weather conditions. Uh, right now they are not pre-treating any of the roadways. However, they will if needed, but you can see that we do have thankfully a pretty green start. Now let's go ahead and get into that third that area off 35 because there was a crash reported here in the southbound lanes of Division Avenue. That's not causing problems. The big problem is going to be right over here in the northbound lanes of 35 at Cesar Chavez where that uh, that exit is closed because of that fire that crews again are working to clear out. But again, traffic that's moving slowing down just a bit to 48 miles per hour. Let's take that drive over here to 1604 over on the northeast side in the westbound lanes of 35. Some patches of ice were picked up a little bit earlier this morning, but it doesn't look like it's causing issues. According to Trans Guide, things look a OK. But let's go ahead and give you one last shot of the roadways right now. You can see that traffic is at a slowdown, and that is again because of this fire that was reported here off 35 at Caesar Chavez. Again, you can still see that flumes of smoke mixed in with that cloud cover. It could be a little tricky to navigate. Just remember to drive safely out there. We're going to have more in this story a little bit later on guys. Thank you, Stephen. 10 hours and counting. That is how long San Antonio fire crews are at the site of that huge fire downtown. The flames and smoke erupted from an abandoned building in the 500 block of Urban Loop late last night. And that is near Interstate 35 in Cesar Chavez. Katrina Weber has an update from the scene and tells us the fire is not the only problems that crews have faced. 
It has been a long night of firefighting here, although some of these are the relief crews that have come in, but this fire has been burning since about 11 o'clock last night. And if you look closely, you can see that these flames still are not out completely. Firefighters still putting water on this building. They say that part of the problem is there is a gas line that is leaking, and so all they can do is to try to stop these flames from spreading to the other buildings nearby. But firefighters did arrive to huge flames and smoke around 11 o'clock last night. They say that this is an abandoned building. It was boarded up, but somehow fire managed to move in. Uh, firefighters are, have been working on this ever since. There have been no injuries, mainly because firefighters have been approaching this from the outside. They were worrying about parts of this building collapsing. Now, according to information online, this building here in the 500 block of Urban Loop at one time was a brothel and more recently has been the source of controversy about its historic site. And we understand at this time, according to the fire chief, this is a historic building, but uh, according to the city, it is not a designated historic site, but definitely a lot of history here that has gone up in smoke. Reporting from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Other top stories we're following today. The fifth and final suspect's been arrested following a shootout. It happened on Monday on the north side of town near Mariposa and Blanco Road. So here's a look at 17-year-old Jerry Ortiz. Police say Ortiz ran away from the scene but later decided to turn himself in. We are told that Ortiz and four other suspects are facing capital murder charges. Right now, it is not clear what started the altercation. The shooting left two people dead, including one of the suspects. It is time for today's 9 at 9. Russian troops launched a wide-ranging pre-dawn attack on Ukraine overnight as Russian President Vladimir Putin disregards international outrage and sanctions. Putin warned other countries that any attempt to stop the madness would result in, quote, consequences you have never seen, end quote. Ukrainian officials already say at least 40 people have been confirmed dead. President Joe Biden is expected to address the nation today to reveal more strict sanctions that will block access to technologies and markets that are key for Russia to survive. President Biden says the world will hold Russia accountable for this unprovoked and unjustified attack. The president's address is expected this afternoon. You can watch it live right here on KSAT 12. This Nevada man, Brandon Toslin, is behind bars this morning after a four-year-old's body was found in a freezer. Officials believe the child belongs to Toslin's girlfriend. She allegedly gave a note to her daughter to pass on to officials at school. The note said the mother was being held against her will and she believed her son was dead. Toslin now faces murder charges and an investigation is ongoing. A police officer is dead after a shooting at a mall in southwest Houston. It's not clear what agency the officer is with. More than a dozen Houston police officers and EMT workers responded to that scene. The suspect was taken to the hospital. That suspect's condition is not known. The motive behind the incident is being investigated. The parents of a 15-year-old boy charged with killing four students at Oxford High School in Michigan are scheduled to return to court this morning. The parents face charges for making the gun available to their son, Ethan Crumbly, and failing to intervene when he showed signs of mental distress. Ethan Crumbly being charged as an adult facing first-degree murder and attempted murder charges. Gasoline prices in the U.S. expected to keep rising amid the Russian conflict. AAA says the national average for a gallon of regular is $3.54, close to a dollar more than this time last year. Some experts think it could hit $4 a gallon. If you have a flight today, check your itinerary. Hundreds of flights have been canceled or delayed overnight due to winter weather across parts of Texas and the rest of the nation. Awards for the winners in eight Oscar categories will be presented before the live show at the Academy Awards this year. Those awards will be edited into the broadcast for viewers at home to watch. The Academy's president, David Rubin, said the change will make the Oscars, quote, tighter and more electric. Grab some guac or salsa. It's National Tortilla Chip Day. Tortilla chips usually made from corn tortillas cut into wedges and then fried. They were originally known in Mexico as tostados, but were first mass produced in Los Angeles, California in the 1940s. And the rest is history. That's today's Nine at Nine. In the morning headlines, we do have the very latest from the war in Ukraine. And nothing like mom wanting to say hi to her baby while he's working. David Sears is here to explain all of this. Good morning. You can never get upset with mom, even if she interrupts your job. That's, That's true. right. You can't. You just, it's just mom. 
What are you supposed to do? So we'll have that in just a second for you. But first, let's start with this. We're going to start with pictures coming out of Eastern Europe, Russia on the attack. You are looking at surveillance video of Russian military trucks and weapons headed into Ukraine. There are several different shots of various types of trucks, including tanks rolling into that country. It's being described by the Ukrainian government as a full-scale war. Russian forces firing off missiles aimed at military targets. This is what it looked like overnight. Residents witnessing their country being attacked. Huge explosions, sirens going off. Then the result of the bombings, damage to vehicles and buildings. Thousands of Ukrainian residents now trying to flee their country. This is just one of the lines of vehicles we're about to see here in just a second. These folks looking for gas just so they can get out of Ukraine and get out of harm's way. We're going to take you to Ukraine and get the latest now from ABC's Faith Abu Bay. This morning, the dramatic images of a Russian military invasion. The state border guard of Ukraine releasing this video showing tanks and other Russian military vehicles driving into Ukraine where the border meets Russia and Belarus. Ukraine's military air bases, key infrastructure and air defense systems under Russian attack. The country waking up to air raid sirens and Russian ballistic missiles going off. This video capturing a plume of smoke and an explosion in the distance near Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. More reports of flares and sounds of explosions in several eastern cities and near the nation's capital of Kyiv. Our Ian panel is there. Explosions. I've seen a large flash in the distance over there, again followed by a boom some minutes later. Russian President Vladimir Putin essentially declaring a full-blown war overnight, saying a special Russian military operation is underway in Ukraine. I think we've passed the point of no return. In a new video, Ukraine's president telling civilians to stay inside and remain calm, and then calling on the world to respond to the Russian attacks. But overnight, Putin warning that any countries that interfere with its plans in Ukraine will face, quote, consequences they have never seen. The U.N. Secretary General in an emergency Security Council meeting urging Putin to instead give peace a chance. As the session wrapped up, the Ukrainian ambassador confronting his Russian counterpart. There is no purgatory for war criminals. They go straight to hell, Ambassador. Faith Abube, ABC News. Once again, Joe Biden, our president, talking with the G7 members, allies of the U.S. this morning, and then he is expected to address the nation sometime early this afternoon. All right, let's finish with some fun this morning. Meet Miles Harris, a news reporter in Columbus, Ohio, just on the street ready to do a normal live shot like all reporters do, and all of a sudden, mom pulls up. <laughs> that starts an ordeal of epic proportions. Oh, it's a greeting <laughs> that gets worldwide attention and some serious interviews. I'm trying to work right now. You over there calling my phone. This is D'Angelo. You can say hi. And don't be holding up traffic because you got cars behind you. It was just around the corner from my house, so I'm on the way to the store, so I'm all, oh, wait, there's a Channel 6 truck. Let me see. She always wants a front row seat. Like, number one cheerleader, leader, she always wants a, like, a front row seat. And that's just like a prime example of, one, a mom being a mom, but just trying to get that front row seat to kind of see what, what I'm doing. I won't tell any dirt if I can get my mixer back. Oh, yeah, you get that back. You can get that back today. He but, makes yeah. girls' pies and he uses my mixer, and then I don't see it for <laughs> six months. That's dirt. <laughs> she... <laughs> Mom spilled the beans after all. Uh -huh. <laughs> Doesn't like being embarrassed by mom, but mom loves him, you can tell. Uh -huh. Yeah, she does. But I'm, I'm telling you, Miles, you might want to get her mixer back to her. Mm. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. probably. It'll be a rough Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's just, that's perfect. That, yeah. A lot of us have been through that over the years. How cute. Yeah. You, <laughs> you can see his face, though. You, it's like, oh. This is probably not the first time or the first job, yeah. possibly. <laughs> but I like how he tells her to move on, you're holding up the <laughs> The cars behind you. Go. And then the photographer's laughing at him. Mm -hmm. So there I'd be you go. laughing too. Well, there you go. she was Great very stuff. proud of her son. Of course. Yes. And yeah, how do you get mad at mom? You don't. You don't. You yeah. do just give not. her her mixer back. That's like exactly. It. All right. Thank Lighter you. moment that we needed today. Love Thank that. you very yep. much, David. <laughs> 9 12, about 32 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. What cultural differences do Ukraine and Russia have? A look at the significance as the two countries go head to head. And a live look inside Ukraine. We have a local expert on standby for more details on how this war could impact the rest of the world, including the U.S. 
and taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Kind of a cold, messy day. We're going to be checking in with Justin after the break. Doorbell camera video of Justin Horn walking out for the first time this morning. I'd like to see it. Oh, <laughs> Just yeah. Just kind of like, hmm? Uh, mm? Checking it out. Yeah, checking, checking it all it out. out. Did you spend a lot, uh, a lot of time outdoors when you first walked out? No. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm not a cold weather fan myself. I know there are some out there that are. Yeah. And probably loving this weather. Uh, it's going to last a couple more days, so you'll you'll get your fair share here. Let's take a look outside. We know that it's wet right now because we can see it on the lens here of our live cam. Still some drizzle coming down. It's all very light, but it is going to cause some wetness on the roads. Now, the good news here is we have not had a lot of reports of any of this turning to ice, especially on the major highways here because the bridges and overpasses have been treated. With all that being said, we know the hill country, those bridges and overpasses, and then especially east of San Antonio, there could be some spots where there are a little bit of ice collects. We'll keep a close eye on it. But the good news here, temperatures are now above freezing in San Antonio, 33 degrees, 36 Stinson, 33 Kelly, 32 at Randolph. And we're still looking at a north wind for the most part, which makes it feel pretty chilly out there. We had to turn the radar up quite a bit to see some of this drizzle coming through, but it is there working south to north and overall it's going to be sort of damp and cloudy and cold to start the day. Then I think as we get into the afternoon, it just turns cloudy and cold. We lose some of this drizzle temperature wise 32 in Holotus 30 Bulverde 32 Canyon Lake 32 in New Braunfels 30 comfort 30 right now in Kerrville. So still below freezing there. You go south to San Antonio. Everything's above freezing 36 in Honda 34 Pleasant and as we said, 33 down there in Beeville, but you look at the winds, it makes it feel so much colder. 28 here in town, 22 the current wind chill in Kerrville. Forecast for today, again, we'll just call for cloudy conditions this afternoon. Temperatures make it up to about 40 or so, and then by tonight, we'll watch for some clearing. I, I think parts of the hill country even this afternoon could see a little bit of sun. Now, it doesn't do a lot for our temperatures, but there could be a little bit of clearing overnight before rain chances kick back in tomorrow, and we see another cool, somewhat damp day. Speaking of February, it's been a month of ups and downs, right? Remember February 4th, we got all the way down to 21. A lot of back and forth here. And then 21st and 22nd, we were in the mid 80s. Now we're going to be below average to finish out the month. So far, we're about uh, 3.9 degrees below average. Again, our warmest days were February 21st and 22nd. But we'll finish on a cold note. As we go into March, more average like temperatures head our way. Here's the radar and satellite. You see some of the ice that is developed. This is some of the heavier stuff moving into parts of Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma, northeast Texas. That's where there's some real issues on the roads as uh, this moves north and east. But for us, again, just some minor issues here and there. And as we look at water vapor, there is some drier air trying to work in from the west. And once that does, again, I think our drizzle kind of shuts off a little bit uh, later today. In the meantime, we still do have that winter weather advisory and it includes San Antonio and then points off to the east. And this is where we could see some light ice accumulation on some of those untreated bridges and overpasses. I think this will be allowed to expire noon today. We'll keep you posted there. Here's a look at the forecast. By 5 o'clock, there you go. Things are a little bit quieter. There's some of that clearing I was talking about out across the hill country, maybe Del Rio. You see some sun today, which will boost your temperatures. And then as we get into the overnight hours, Clearing line tries to make it to San Antonio. I don't know that it has much luck. And then as we get into tomorrow, here we go again. Cloud cover, light sprinkly showers, maybe a little bit of drizzle here and there through the day. And then I think the shower activity actually picks up a little bit as we get into Saturday morning. Once again, we're going to have to watch some spots in the hill country, which could briefly get down to freezing. But I think in this scenario, a lot less in the way of uh, freezing uh, precipitation, probably just liquid, all liquid here in San Antonio. And we'll see those showers throughout the day on Sunday. If you're hoping for some sun,
We hope to get that to you on Sunday. Uh, skies will slowly clear and we'll get those temperatures back into the 50s and then eventually 60s and 70s next week. But in the meantime, cloudy, cold, damp, good soup weather, I suppose, guys. Yeah, we can do that. Thank yeah, you, Justin, you got it. Time right now, 921, about 32 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, Ukraine and Russia are neighbors, but there are some cultural differences. A look at what sets the two countries apart next. Right now, live look where it is 524 p.m. in Kyiv this morning, the capital of Ukraine, a full scale war underway. Multiple explosions reported again and rockets have been seen flying across the sky by reporters on the ground. There also a report from ABC News now that Russian and Belarusian forces have now entered the Chernobyl exclusion zone, uh, famous for the nuclear meltdown and explosion uh, many, many years ago. But this is just an area only 60 miles north of the capital of Kiev. And this all comes as adversarial differences boil over between two nations that on the surface appear to have shared culture. ABC's Will Gans has more. From 6,000 miles away, it can be difficult to understand the differences in Russian and Ukrainian cultural identities because the cultural similarities are visible. Race and religious practices and even an overlap in language. Just because someone's a Russian speaker in Ukraine doesn't mean they're not Ukrainian. But experts warn against only looking at the similarities. The claim is, well, they speak Russian, so they belong in Russia, so we can invade um, a sovereign country that has no desire for us to invade them. The cultural identity markedly changing when Ukraine gained its independence in 1991. I don't want to have anything in common with Russian culture, with Russian language, as it poses a real threat to my country, to my family, to my city. The Russian threat looming large as Vladimir Putin's forces advance on Ukraine. I try to stay calm, but then when I let's, I have difficulties falling asleep. So what day-to-day -day cultural distinctions are now in jeopardy? The books people are reading and the shows they're watching, art, theater, music. Sir Elton John speaking in Ukraine about LGBTQ plus rights just a few years ago, something that would likely never happen a few hundred miles east. Russia is a place of unfreedom. You can't protest. You can't speak out against the government. For Ukraine, it's an entire civic identity at stake. What is the one thing you would want folks here to understand about what's happening over there? That people there are just like you and me. They're trying to live their lives, and they've been doing so in an independent state for 30 years. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. Changes to Brackenridge Park no longer in the works. This after officials put a vote on hold. Details on what's behind their decision in our next half hour. And again, a live look at Kyiv, Ukraine. We have a local expert on standby for more details on how all this could impact the global economy, including the U.S. We have that interview with multiple questions for our expert coming up after this break. A big story this morning, the world watching as Ukraine is invaded by Russian forces. President Biden has been meeting with NATO to create a plan for more sanctions on Russia in the hopes that it might cause President Vladimir Putin to pull back. And for a closer look at what impacts this invasion could have on the U.S. and the rest of the world, we bring in local expert Dr. Rosa Aloisi. She's a political science professor and expert in international relations at Trinity University. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, thanks for being here. Well, first of all, why is Russia invading and how much could Ukraine suffer? Well, Ukraine is already suffering considerably. Uh, we already seen seen this morning of uh, civilians uh, going to uh, grocery stores, to bank, just to make sure that they have enough to uh, be safe in their homes. Uh, so uh, Ukraine is uh, suffering from a, a humanitarian point of view, but also from a territorial point of view. Its sovereignty has been uh, uh, definitely uh, broken by uh, another member of the United Nations uh, and uh, most importantly, a member of the United Nations Security Council. Uh, so uh, we are definitely facing uh, an international crisis uh, uh, that is affecting not only the country in itself, but the civilian population on the ground. What can the U.S. and its NATO allies do at this point? Is there a military option here? Well, from what I was reading uh, yesterday and this morning, it seems that uh, uh, the military option is off the table at this moment in time. So 
uh, the United States uh, and Biden declared that they're not going to be sending any troops from the United States, even though the uh, um, uh, military effort in Europe is being strengthened. So we do see movement of troops in Europe. We did see some troops moving from Italy mm -hmm. into uh, closer regions to Ukraine. Um, uh, the hope would be that uh, some diplomatic efforts could uh, just prevent uh, uh, a further escalation of the war. The problem that we are facing is that we don't really know what are the real intentions of Putin, whether he will stop at Ukraine or he can challenge Europe uh, peaceful setting uh, post-World War II for the first time after World War II. And do you believe the rest of Europe will be drawn into a wider conflict? Uh, I believe that uh, uh, the intention uh, is not there to be drawn into a wider conflict, uh, um, uh, but it really depends on uh, uh, what happens next. And uh, uh, again, uh, uh, facing uncertainty uh, and uh, uh, we don't really know what is going to uh, be uh, the movement of Russian troops uh, through Ukraine. Uh, I answering your question, so I believe that if the Russian troops will move further into Ukraine, uh, NATO will be forced to intervene and stop further expansions of Russian's ambitions. Uh, Dr. Aloisi, do you believe this is the beginning of a new Cold War between the United States and Russia? I believe it is in the making, and I believe it has been in the making for some time now. Um, we have seen that uh, uh, diplomatic efforts, uh, even in other sections of the globe, uh, have seen uh, the United States and Russia positioned in two different uh, uh, realms of ideology. Even uh, uh, ideas about uh, the Syrian crisis, uh, some of the Middle Eastern crisis have seen uh, uh, polarization of ideological positions between Russia and the United States. I believe this is probably one of the most challenging moments that will definitely put the United States and Russia on a Cold War, back on a Cold War setting. And Dr. Aloisi, how much do you think this war will affect the global economy, including fuel prices? Uh, uh, unfortunately, that's already affected that. Uh, um, we've seen uh, uh, the market collapsing. We've seen uh, the uh, prices of oil and gas uh, increasing dramatically. Uh, we know that the importance of Ukraine is uh, indeed is uh, uh, gas reserves and the fact that uh, it's, it functions as a buffer between Russia and, uh, and Europe, in a sense. And it provides Europe with uh, uh, enormous amount of uh, uh, gas and, uh, uh, and some other type of uh, primary resources. It is called the breadbasket of Europe for a reason, because it is so important in terms of resources. The fact that Russia is creating instability in the country. It is increasing the prices of those commodities. And we will see the global market suffering considerably in the next couple of days. All right, Dr. Aloisi from Trinity University, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me again. Have a good day. You, you as well, thank you. And just as a note to all of you, as far as U.S. markets, the Dow dropped over 700 points earlier this morning, and oil has jumped to over $105 a barrel. So she was correct. The ramifications have already begun in the global markets, including here in the U.S. All right, let's go to Justin. Oh, you can see there a live cam. We still got some droplets on the live cam and still sort of damp out there. Some drizzle works its way through San Antonio. The good news here, the good news is that temperatures are above freezing now, 33 degrees. We've had a few issues with some slick spots, but by and large, we've dodged a bullet here this morning with this whole system. It's just cloudy, cold, and somewhat damp. Let's look at the radar right now. We see some of that light drizzle working through. And yes, we see that pink color. It's possible that we could be looking at some light freezing drizzle. Now, a lot of the bridges and overpasses were treated. But uh, some of those ones that are not, you will want to keep it uh, or go slow in those areas and just use some caution if in case uh, we do see a little bit of light ice developing. Now, if you're going up towards Austin, that's where things get a little bit worse. Uh, they were reporting some accidents up there with some icy on the bridges and overpasses. And certainly as you get up towards Dallas, things get much worse. Here's a look at the satellite picture. A lot of cloud cover. And that's going to keep temperatures chilly again today. We're at 33 degrees right now, 30 in Kerrville, 27 in Fredericksburg. Temperatures eventually make it up to around 40 or so here in San Antonio. Now, out west, where there will be some sun, temperatures 
will jump into the 40s or upper 40s this afternoon. Windshield value still in the 20s, feels like 27 here in town, feels like 22 in Kerrville, 22 in Rock Springs, chilly day. Pollen count is in, molds at 150 lead the way today, they're in the low category, but everything is low and Mountain Cedar doesn't want to give up, it's at the 30 currently and low. Uh, looking at the winter weather advisory, still in effect, it does include San Antonio points east. This is going to go through midday today, but I think you'll start to see this. Uh, well, it'll probably expire and uh, we'll be able to just see some cloudy skies a little bit later this afternoon with some clearing tonight. Chances of rain, though, do return tomorrow. We'll talk more about that and also some decent rain chances on Saturday. That's coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. A quick look at the roads with Transguide. You can still still see smoke out there, uh, out there at I-35 Cesar Chavez. So this is from the fire that we've had overnight. But traffic there uh, still moving. It looks like that exit though is still closed at this time. Additional investigators are being added to the Family Justice Center here in San Antonio. The hope is that it will help in the fight against domestic violence. This after the Bear County Commissioners approved the request earlier this week. A big win for the District Attorney's Office, which currently had only one investigator. Erica Hernandez spoke with the DA about how this will improve safety. Serving protective orders is no easy task. In fact, it can be a dangerous job. It is one of the reasons why District Attorney Joan Gonzalez requested additional investigators be added at the Family Justice Center. These are high risk uh, type of cases and, and, and often these individuals have violent histories or violent themselves. The center currently only has one investigator and in 2021 that one person conducted more than 800 address investigations, served more than 300 protective orders, and of those protective orders served, more than 200 respondents had active warrants or firearms in their possession. I want to ensure the safety of everyone that's involved in this process from our uh, our employees to anybody else that, that happens to be present. With the approval from Bear County Commissioners, the Family Justice Center will now add two more investigators to help with the workload, which has also increased in the past couple of years. Part of that is because of the rise in domestic violence cases and the process to apply for a protective order has gotten easier. We have streamlined the process to where someone can actually apply online and can and can hear within a matter of hours. Overall, the addition of more investigators is another step the county is taking toward fighting domestic violence. Some may say uh, that a protective order is just a piece of paper. It's, a, it's certainly a necessary tool that we have in our tool belt to protect victims of domestic violence. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 940, about 33 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9 and plans to revamp Brackenridge Park put on hold. Details on why next. And welcome back. It's 943. The city of San Antonio is still trying to fine tune planned improvements to Brackenridge Park included in the last bond issue five years ago, all the while knowing it has another bond issue coming up that needs voter support. The Brackenridge Park plan was supposed to go before the Historic Design and Review Commission for a final vote this week, but not anymore. Jesse DeGoyado now with why it's believed the city changed its mind. We got like eight park employees chasing away one bird. A single egret ignoring the board clapping below. The latest attempt along with firing an air gun hoping to scare off the egrets who'd be nesting in the trees at least for now. Stop the chop. Protesters like Alicia Garlic are trying to save both. We need trees to breathe and wildlife needs trees to survive. I mean, I've been coming here as a kid. <laughs> I hope they don't cut them down because they're beautiful. Public pressure is believed partly why the city has temporarily backed off its proposed removal of at least 100 trees, several over a century old. There's been large public outcry um, for a delay to the process and for changes. The District 2 council member says the problem is the design hadn't been completed and there wasn't enough public input. It was recognized that it was a little early to be making that a request to remove trees. I think this is a victory. I think it's a victory. Not quite, says the longtime founder and president of Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation, Lynn Cuny. What it 
means is Mother Nature wins for the moment. What should happen is that we should agree from the get-go that no harm will be done to the trees or the animals. Both say there should be ways to save or move the wall weakened by roots from the trees and deal with the bird droppings, a public health concern in a park, instead of cutting down trees and scaring off birds. How can anybody in their right mind see that as improving a park? Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Now, the city's Parks and Rec Director and the project manager agreed to speak to us earlier this week, but canceled within a few hours of the final vote being postponed. However, City Manager Eric Walsh did say in his announcement, announcement, quote, I have directed staff to pause consideration by the HDRC, which was dominated the conversation and distracted from the broader benefits of the restoration work while we complete the design and work with our partners and stakeholders, end quote. Let's go back to Justin Horn now, 945, hovering just above uh, 32 degrees right now. And today's one of those days we kind of like the time lapse video for some perspective. Yeah, it shows us that we kind of see these waves of drizzle, right? And that's exactly what we're going to see here probably over the next couple of hours before things sort of dry out a little bit. But you can see some of the drops in the live cam as we look right now, sitting at 33. That's an important number, of course. As you know, we're just above freezing there, so that helps. That's not the case, though, east of here, so we will keep an eye on some of those counties, places like Gonzales, where just got to report temperatures just sitting around 30 degrees, uh, someone's thermometer there. So there still could be a few slick spots as some of this moisture does eventually work east. You see on the radar, this is all really light stuff, but some drizzle still working through, and then it is cold enough where some of this could be in the form of very light freezing drizzle uh, across northeastern portions of Bear County and as you get into Comal County, the good news is we have not had a lot of reports of issues on the roads. Maybe, maybe a few bridges and overpasses with a slick spot or two, but in general, uh, we did pretty well this morning. 31 Canyon Lake, 30 Bernie Stage, 30 in Comfort, 32 Bandera. We're above freezing Port SA. 34 there, 37 down at Stinson, and 36 Carrizo Springs, 43 out in Del Rio. Del Rio is probably going to be one of our warm spots today. And you look at the wind chill values, in the 20s for the most part, few teens out there. It's remaining cold, and any sort of warm-up is going to hold off until Sunday, so don't expect anything warm next couple of days. As we look at the forecast temperatures, uh, today probably only around 40 in San Antonio. Actually colder for some of our eastern counties, 35 Gonzales, 35 for High and Howitzville. Now you go west, I think the sun pops out this afternoon, and that could push temperatures up close to 60 in Del Rio. So there will be a big difference in temperature east to west. But here in town, I think it probably stays cloudy and that keeps us cool. Tonight, 34 for a low. There will be some freezing temperatures in the hill country. This time, though, it doesn't come with precipitation. And then tomorrow, rain does come back into the picture. But temperatures will be just a little bit warmer. And again, that's a good thing. 40 degrees here in San Antonio with some mid 30s in the hill country. Here's the big picture. You see all the ice and some snow as you get up into parts of eastern Oklahoma, Arkansas. That's a mess up there. A lot of roadways with ice on them there. And then you see kind of a piece of energy extending back to San Antonio. That's some energy moving through. We're starting to see some drier air, though and more stable air working from the west, and that's why we think the drizzle in general will shut off as we get into the afternoon. In the meantime, there is still that winter weather advisory, San Antonio, and now I think points east. These are the areas we kind of have to watch here next couple of hours where there could be some light icing on the bridges and overpasses, especially those ones that have not been treated. And again, this goes through noontime today, and I think it probably will be allowed to expire once we get to that point. Here's a look at our forecast. And it does show those light showers and some of that light freezing drizzle pushing east. This is around 5 o'clock. I mentioned the clearing out west. There you go. Rock Springs, Del Rio. You could see some sun this afternoon. And that clearing line tries to get close to San Antonio overnight, but probably doesn't quite make it. So we stay in the cloud cover, and then the clouds thicken up again tomorrow. We're back in that uh, chance for some showers and uh, maybe some light drizzle with cold conditions. And then on Saturday, I think rain chances actually pick up a little bit and you'll notice there's a little more pink showing up. It's possible in the hill country there could be some light, uh, light rain, light freezing rain again. But I think the chances here are probably a little bit lower. Temperatures will be just a little bit warmer and uh, we'll not see many issues from that. As we get into Saturday night, same story, still some rain around. But Sunday, Sunday, as I mentioned, is the day where we finally start to get some clearing. Temperatures warm up. 
58 degrees. And then from there, it's uh, some pretty nice weather. 67 Monday. We're back in the 70s by Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll be right back. <laughs> well, he's just going to town there. You said it's still puppy breath? Oh, my gosh, yes. Okay. The so best ever. Go now and get, and get the puppy breath from this little guy. So who is this little yes. boy? Yes. So uh, this is Owl. Um, he, again, is a little terrier mix and just loves to give kisses. I mean, oh, my goodness. Thank you, sweet baby. <laughs> you are just great. <laughs> Look at that. One of eight that came in, right? Yes, one of eight from the litter. Um, has lots of brothers and sisters, and the mama got adopted uh, a week ago. So, yeah, he's just ready to go. He's excited. Look at him this morning. And he and all his siblings were perfect examples of the fostering program there. Yes. Because yeah. they were underweight, but went but, with the foster family. Yeah. Got Absolutely. him fed, got him taken care of. And ready of. to go. And look, he's definitely going to need some chew toys because he is having some fun this morning with my finger. Yeah, he's just going to rule the <laughs> roost. He's just going to rule it, yeah. <laughs> well, if you'd like this little guy and yeah. uh, check out his siblings and all the other cats and dogs out there at the San Antonio Humane Society, just head on over to 4804 Fredericksburg Road. Oh, thank you. Kisses are free, by the way. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank you, dear. Thank you. Hey, good morning. Coming up on live, we'll chat with entrepreneur Mark Cuban. He'll tell us about the latest season of Shark Tank. We'll see you soon, right here on live. And another look at the roads with TransGuide out there. Uh, things looking okay, but still that exit ramp there at Cesar Chavez is still closed. And you can still see smoke off the highway from that massive fire we had overnight. And there still will be some wet roads here and there. We've got drizzle coming down. That sort of winds, that winds down a little bit this afternoon. We're sitting just above freezing right now. We only make it up to about 40. Expect some more light showers next couple days. Cloudy skies, cool temperatures. It's not until late in the weekend that we get to see the sun again, guys. All right, back to our top story now. A war has now officially arrived in Ukraine. Live look right now where it is now 5.55 in the evening. You're looking live at Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. Here's what we know so far. Ukrainian forces are battling a Russian attack on multiple fronts. At least 40 people, if not more, have been killed so far today. President Biden was set to meet earlier today with allies to impose, quote unquote, severe sanctions on Moscow. And all of this uh, has sent stocks tumbling uh, worldwide on Thursday morning. This is after Russia's attack of Ukraine. You can see the Dow down uh, 32,000. And uh, looking at Wall Street, the S&P 500 sank 1.6% in early trading. Benchmark index is now down 13.5% percent from its record set early this year. Yeah, we started down over 700, Steph, and right now we're down about 582 or so, but it's going to stay uh, negative, it looks like, most of the day. And stay with us. Uh, President Biden will be speaking at 1130 our time, Central Time. That's right. Uh, he will be speaking, according to the White House, 1130, talking about what he calls Russia's unprovoked and unjustified attack on Ukraine. Have a good day.